Hey, how you doing? I just wanted to uh, give an invitation to a Baptist church. Okay. Do you go to church anywhere? Or? Yeah, I go to the Assembly of God church right now. Here. Okay. All right. Well, listen, uh, more important than going to church, though, if you were to die today, do you know 100% sure that you're on your way to heaven? Oh, yeah. Okay. How, how do you know that? March 12th, 1988, I confessed my sins, repented, and accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Okay. Well, uh, let me ask you this. Is, is there anything you could do to lose that? Like, let's say you, you know, quit going to church or you live the life of sin or... Well, you know. if I turn away from Him, don't repent. Yeah. So, okay. So, uh, basic... Can I just show you what the Bible says real quick? Just take a few minutes and show you? Okay. The Bible says right here in uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we all have sinned, right? And uh, do we really measure up to God's standards? We come short. Okay, none of us is really good enough to go to heaven. Okay, we're all sinners. Well, the Bible says right here in Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death. Okay, so what's God's punishment for our sin? Dying. Death, yeah. But after we die, that's not the end. Okay, you know, when we die physically, the Bible talks about a second death, okay? Mm -hmm. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. What what place is that talking about? Yeah, that's talking about hell. Hell, right? Yeah. Okay, and you know what the worst part about hell is? Is that it goes on forever. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, once you yeah. go there, I mean, it's there's no hope. You're burning in hell forever, and it's, it's a terrible thought. Now, have you ever told a lie before? Oh, yeah. Well, the Bible even says this, and uh, at the end of uh, Revelation 21, 8, it says, And all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So that says right there that all liars are going where? Hell. To hell, yeah, okay. Well, uh, God loves us, right? Right. So does God want us to go to hell then? No, God wants us to be saved, okay? So here's what God did for us to provide a way for us to be saved. The Bible says, But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. So, of course, Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. God himself became a human being, lived a perfect life, he never sinned one time, and then he allowed them to take him and beat him and spit upon him, and they nailed him to the cross, and when he was on the cross, you know, he, he took upon him the sins of the whole world, the Bible says. And uh, he was basically dying for our sins, the Bible says he died for us. He was being punished for all the sins that we've done, okay? Now, when he died on that cross, every sin you've ever done, it was as if Jesus had done it. Every sin I've ever done. When he died on the cross, uh, they, they took his body and they buried it in a tomb. But his soul went down to hell for three days and three nights. Three days later, he rose again, physically rose again from the dead. But let me ask you this. Did he die for everybody? Oh, yeah. Okay. So if he died for everybody, is everybody going to heaven? No. Okay. So the question is, what do we have to do in order to be saved? And the Bible answers that question right here. It says, and they uh, brought them out and said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. So what does that verse say you have to do in order to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay. Now, does that say that you have to go to church to be saved? I mean, it just says believe, right? Okay, does that say that you must be baptized to be saved? No, but what do you do about Acts 2.38? Well, but wait a minute. This verse right here says says what? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Isn't that all that you have to do to be saved then? Okay. Believe. Whosoever believeth in him. Okay. Then what do you do about Acts 2.30? Does he say repent and turn from your sins? So are you, are you saying that you have to uh, turn from your sins I to mean, be saved? is that day of Pentecost when the Holy Ghost came down? Okay. You have to repent? Well, hold on. Let, let, me, let me show you that real quick. Let's look at that. So let me add, do you believe that a person has to be baptized to be saved? Well, isn't the one and the same? Is it what one and the same? The salvation, baptism, isn't that, I mean, isn't that a requirement? Well, hold on, let me, let me, let's look well, at let's Acts 2.38. Yeah. Acts 2.38, the Bible says right here, in verse, 30, in verse 37, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Okay. So, but wait a minute. Hold on. Does that that verse doesn't say saved anywhere? Okay. Go back up here. Okay. Yeah. To verse this is the day of Pentecost, right? Let's go back to verse number twenty-one. It says right here, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Okay. And if you, if you remember Romans chapter 10, 
13, it says, For whosoever shall call upon the name yeah. of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? So the Bible says that we're saved by faith, saved by believing on Jesus Christ and by calling on the name of the Lord. Now let me ask you this. If baptism is required for salvation, how did Noah get saved? How did Abraham get saved? How did David get saved? Because wait a minute. Who was the first person who baptized? John the Baptist. Yeah. Okay. So wait a minute. How did the, all these people for 4,000 years be saved? But wait a minute. Remember in the Old Testament, it said in uh, the days of Enos in Genesis chapter 5, it said, Then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Remember it says of Noah, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. So Noah was saved by grace. It says in uh, Genesis about Abraham, Abraham believed God and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Okay, let me show you a verse here. Look at, look at uh, Romans chapter four. It says right here in Romans chapter four, it says, but to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are recovered, Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. And it talks about here, you know, if Abraham were justified by works, he hath were of the glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted him for righteousness. So Abraham was saved by believing on Christ. According to that, he believed God. Noah believed God. Uh, Enoch, you know, believed on God, called upon the name of the Lord, it even says, okay? David also describes the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works. Okay. Now, isn't baptism works? I mean, being baptized, you know, it's 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 a good work. You know, going to church, that's good works. Okay, all these different things. So the question is, if baptism is part of salvation, how did people get saved for all these years? See what I'm saying? Like what about the thief on the cross? Did he get baptized? No. So the thief on the cross, he just looked to Jesus Christ and just believed on and asked to be saved. Okay. So the thing is, it says here, you know, what shall we do? They're asking what they should do. There's a difference between what we should do and what we must do. What must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Here he says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. In verse uh, Acts 2.21 right there. Earlier on, they said, what should we do? Repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord. We should repent of sin. You know, that's a daily thing. You know what I mean? Because we're constantly sinning. We're constantly, but, but if we had to repent of all our sins to be saved, none of us would be going to heaven. And really, he just said, believe on Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And look, repenting of sin is works. Okay. In fact, let me show you that real quick. In the book of Jonah is one place. Now, let me Give me a second to turn there. But in the book of Jonah right here, let's see here, Micah, we'll go back to this one more book. Here's Jonah, look at this. It says, and God saw their what? Works. God saw their works that they turned from their evil way. And God repented of the evil that he had said that he would do unto them, and he did it not. So God saw their works that they turned from their evil. So turning away from drinking, turning away from sin, that's works. That's a good, I mean, it's good. We should do it. We should be baptized. We should repent of our sins. Okay, but that's not what we have to do in order to be saved. Okay, now he says right here, he says, uh, you know, then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Okay, you see that? So, now, let me ask this. Have you ever seen a poster that says, Wanted for Murder? You know what I'm talking about, like, oh, yeah. in the Old West? Yeah. Wanted for Murder? Okay, what does that mean? They're wanted because of murder. You know, wanted for armed robbery. They're wanted because of... Okay, so here, he's saying... Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins. He's saying because of the fact that your sins have been remitted. Now, I'm going I'm to prove that to you, okay? Because he's saying here, let's read it one more time, Acts 2.38. Then Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Let's look at Acts 10, okay? I'm going to go just a few uh, chapters forward in the Bible. Now, look at this right here. He says right here in verse 44, while, actually let's go back here. Remember how I talked to you about how in the Old Testament people were saved by believing on Christ, calling on Him, calling on God, not by baptism because baptism didn't exist. It says in verse 43 of Acts 10, 
to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whose who's name? Jesus Christ is who he's talking about. Whosoever believeth in him shall receive what? Remission, remission of sins. So who receives remission of sins? Whosoever believeth in him. All the prophets preach that, he's saying in the Old Testament. Acts 10, 43. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. So here's people that are told, hey, it's whosoever believeth. While they heard the words, the Bible says, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, watch this, can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord, then prayed to him to tarry certain days. So wait a minute. Here's a bunch of people who believed on Christ. And what'd they get? Remission of sins. What'd they get? The gift of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that what Acts 2.38 talked about? Okay. Then they got baptized. So do you get baptized in order to get remission of sins? Or do you get it baptized as a result of the remission of sins? So you got to understand the word for has a couple different meanings. Okay. What comes first? Believe comes first. Then comes baptism. When you believe, you get the remission of sins. When you believe, that's where the gift of the Holy Ghost was poured out, when they believed the words that Peter was preaching. Then he got baptized. You see that sequence right there? Same thing in Acts 8, 37. Verse 36 says, you know, what doth hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both filled in the eunuch, and he baptized them. So look, you saw the order there in Acts 10. You believe the word of God. And this goes all the way back to Genesis. This is the whole Bible. Believe on Christ. Believe on the Lord. Call upon him. Saved. Okay. Sins are remitted. And then, hey, now it's time to get baptized as a result. Okay, do you see that? So did these people in Acts 10 get baptized before or after they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. After. Okay. Did that were their sins remitted before or after they got baptized? Before. Yeah. Okay. So you see how clear that is? So it's just salvation is by faith. Jesus paid it all by grace through faith. Let me show you a few other verses real quick. Look at John 6 47. The Bible says right here in John 6 47, Verily, verily I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So a person who believes on Jesus Christ, they have, right now, present tense, everlasting life, okay? John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, what? Believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So it's whosoever, what? Whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Now, if anybody who believes on Christ alone for salvation is not saved, how is that true? When he said whosoever believeth. I mean, if there's a guy who believes and doesn't get baptized, or a guy who believes and doesn't go to church, and he goes to hell, that wouldn't even be true, because that says whosoever believes it, okay? Let me show you one last verse, and this kind of ties the whole thing together, okay? It says in Romans 6.23, it says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord, okay? Now, is a gift something free, or do you have to earn it? It's free. Okay. Let's say I were to give you this Bible as a gift, and I said, here, I'm going to give you this Bible as a gift, but you got to give me $5. Is that a gift? Okay. What if I said, okay, one cent? Still, uh, what if I said, okay, it's free, but you gotta, you gotta uh, do some housework for me. You gotta clean up my house. Because okay. you can't work for it. Okay. So, let me ask this: Who pays for a gift? The giver or the receiver? Giver. Okay. Who's giving us eternal life? So who pays for it? How much do we have to pay? Just have to receive. And how do we receive it? What do we have to do to receive it? Believe, Believe on Christ. It's faith alone. Do we have to be baptized to, 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 in order to receive it? We should be baptized, right? Do we have to turn from our sins to receive it? We should, but what must we do to be saved? Believe on, Be believe on Christ, okay? Now, what's that word eternal mean? Do you know what that means? Everlasting. Forever, yeah, okay. So if, if we have eternal life, okay, how many times do you think we have to get that gift that will last forever? One time, right? And then we're saved for how long? Okay, so so I mean, if it's a gift, let's say I gave you this gift, right? Okay, who's it belong to? Me. 
can I just come and take it away from you whenever I want? It's yours, right? I gave it to you. Okay, so if God gave you eternal life, is God going to take that away from you? Like, let, let's say you were to kill somebody. Is God going to take that away from you? Well, wait a minute. I mean, you could turn away from it and, and, and lose it. You mean lose your salvation? Yeah, I mean, you, you just can't turn away from it. Okay, but wait a minute. Didn't he say it's eternal life? Yeah. It's everlasting. Well, so he's not going to turn his back on us, but we can turn our backs on him. Well, hold on a second. Remember that verse I showed you back in John 6, 47? It's, and, and this is just a really simple verse, and it really says the same thing as what we were just reading in Romans 6, 23. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me has everlasting life. Okay. That's present tense. So let me ask you this. If you have everlasting life today, and then let's say 10 years from now, you were to do something awful, like, like you said, like turn away from him or you know, commit some awful sin, and then God were to, you know, let's say you were to die, and then God were to send you to hell because you had turned from him. Was that really eternal? Did it go on forever, your salvation? Okay, so if I have eternal life today, which is what, March 8th, 2009, if I have eternal life March 8th, 2009, and then on March 8th, 2015, I kill somebody, and, uh, and I'm killed in return, you know, I've committed murder, and God says, well, that's it, you've turned away from me, or whatever you were saying, okay, and I die and go to hell, did that really, did I really have eternal life back on uh, March 8th? It ended. You see what I'm saying? So if God's promising that if I believe on him, I have eternal life, and then it ends for any reason, was it ever really eternal? See, something that ends cannot be eternal. So if the Bible says the gift of God's eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord, we only have to believe on him one time. We'll be saved eternally, and God will never take that away from us. Jesus said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of things we should do, but one thing we must do is believe on him. Now look, I was never good enough to be saved in the first place. We can't ever be bad enough to where he'll take it away. It's by grace. We don't deserve it in the first place. If we believe on him through his shed blood, we will receive the remission of sins by believing on him. We pass from death unto life. We have eternal life. Okay? Do you believe that? Yeah. You see it now? So, so is there anything you could ever do to lose your salvation? Because it's, it's free. It's a gift. It's eternal. It lasts forever. Okay. Well, listen. Now, now, now that you know, when I first got here, you know, you were saying it's it's baptism, it's repentance. Do you realize that's works now? Yeah. Okay. It's just what by which we're saved. Believe, on. believe on Christ. Okay. Listen. I want to help you pray right now and tell God that that's what you believe. That way, you'll know for sure that you're going to heaven. Because in order to be saved, you know, you got to believe on Him with all your heart. You got to have all your faith and trust in Him. Not not some of it in Him and some of it in what what your actions, what you're doing, your baptism, your religion, your church. Okay. So I want you to pray this and just tell God that this is what you believe. You can just repeat after me. But I want you to mean this to God, okay? Just, just pray this. Uh, Dear Jesus, Dear Jesus. I know that I'm a sinner. I know, I'm a sinner. I, know I deserve to go to hell. I know I deserve to go to hell. But I believe that you died on the cross for me. But I believe that you died on the cross. And rose again. And rose again. Please save me right now. Please save me right now. And give me everlasting life. Give me everlasting life. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. I'm only trusting you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now you meant that, right? So look, if you were to die right now, where would you go? Why? Right. Okay, and how many times do you have to do that? And you're saved forever. All right, well, praise God.